This is the 20th anniversary of transforming transportation. 20th wedding anniversary is a China anniversary. Why China? Well, because it is a sign of a delicate, curated, beautifully held together relationship that isn't chit. Which kind of explains what we're doing here. The delicate balance. I also, and we also wanted to make sure that we just took a moment to really appreciate what has happened with transport professionals, with transforming transportation in the last two decades. So there are two people who you will hear from. You'll hear from Nancy Keat, who's the principal of Keat Consulting. Nancy is an OG at Transforming Transportation. Hello, Nancy. And also Nicolas Peltier Tiberge, who's the global director at the World Bank. Please come up here. Nicolas, where do you want to do your conversation? Do you want to do it from here to here with Nancy? Yeah. All right. Good choice. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you for me. Thank you uh, very much, Femi, uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, this has been a long day with a series of uh, inspiring uh, speakers and fantastic panelists. Uh, I hope that, like me, you look forward to uh, tomorrow because we have an equally uh, exciting program that I'm sure you will en enjoy as well. So as Femi was saying before we close this, uh, this first day, we felt it would be a good idea to uh, take a few moments to celebrate this 20th uh, anniversary of transforming transportation. You don't turn 20 every day. Uh, and this is an opportunity to mark the occasion, look back on these past 20 years, and also look to the future. To celebrate these past two decades, we've invited a very special guest who is uh, joining us remotely. Nancy Kete has been a founding mother of Transforming Transportation and an active member of its organization committee until about 2012 when she left her position as director of Embark at the World Resources Institute. As many of you know, Embark is a distinguished program that catalyzed environmentally sustainable transport solutions in many countries, including Mexico, Brazil, India, Turkey, and the Indian region. So good evening, Nancy. Uh, great to have you tonight to reflect on how transforming transportation started and has evolved over these past two decades to become one of the major global forums for transport policy. Nancy, you were part of every TT since the beginning uh, uh, until 2012. The TT journey started with a small group of uh, development professionals just like you, uh, who saw that the trajectory of the transport sector in most countries was simply not sustainable and was taking a growing toll on economies, on the planet, and on the health and well-being of communities. They understood the impact that mobility could have on the broader development agenda, which is why they decided to bring together the best and brightest transport experts in search of concrete solutions to transform transportation. So Nancy, can you please tell us about these early conversations and how the idea of transforming transportation started? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the introduction, Nicola. And thank you, audience. I know this is the 10 minutes between you and a long day and cocktails. So <laughs> I'll try to keep this, keep this lively and brief. Um, transforming transportation is started really as part of the beginning of Embark, which was the WRI Center for Sustainable Transport. And it, just give me a minute to explain the connection and then we'll move on back straight into transforming transportation. But when we got the grant to start Embark, we had, I think, maybe four strategy lines. The first and most important was to get something done in developing country cities related to sustainable transport. And the second line was to do it in partnership with those cities or with entities in the cities. And that led to the creation of these centers, which Nicola mentioned in Mexico City and Shanghai, Istanbul, uh, the Andean region, Brazil. And then the third and the fourth are where transforming transportation came from. And uh, my partner in establishing Embark was a man named Lee Shipper. And uh, 
So the third line of the strategy was make sure we knew that whatever it was that we instigated or tried to get done really would accomplish what we were trying to accomplish. And the joke Lee and I shared often was, well, what do we know and how well do we know it? And that led to us wanting to convene, as Nicola said, the best and the brightest. And the fourth line was, well, who's we? You know, is it okay if we in Washington or Berkeley or in Brussels knew it? If the people in the countries or the cities where we're trying to work don't know it or don't agree, or we don't know what they know. So the idea behind transforming transportation was to start to convene. We initially attached it to uh, the same week as TRB and the developing country committee of TRB so that we could share in the travel costs and try to get the people in the cities that we cared about to be able to come and talk with people in North America and Europe who had an easier time traveling about what they knew, not only about the, the challenges, but also about emerging and effective solutions. So that was the beginning of transforming transportation. Um, and initially it was a little bit more technology focused, not because we thought technology was the only solution. In fact, we already had a lot of evidence that it wasn't, but because there was such a press at the time uh, for these emerging technologies. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about that, Nicola, if you want to direct the conversation in that, that way. But clean diesel was a big um, focus of conversation 20 years ago, and that turned out to be a total bust. Uh, it was a sort of a contest in that conversation 20 years ago. Clean diesel, natural gas, electrification seemed like a wish, like me, people weren't even sure that it was ever going to come about, and now it's the leading contender. Hydrogen, uh, you know, it was really a wide, a wide open conversation at the time. So thank, thank you, Nancy. And to follow up on what you just said, uh, I recently had a chance to have a look at the agenda of the, of the first TT, uh, and I was quite amazed to see how some of the themes that were discussed uh, at the time uh, have been anticipating today's challenges in the transportation sector. Um, the first TT talked about zero emission vehicles, immobility, e alternative fuels, uh, even uh, hydrogen, uh, as you said. And the, the other interesting thing about TT is that from the start, uh, I mean, this was designed as a platform to discuss uh, technological innovation, but not only that, also the, uh, the policies uh, to implement them. And the way to do this was to, by bringing together uh, not only academics and civil society uh, representatives, but also practitioners, uh, policymakers, and the private sector. Uh, so transforming transportation has not kept uh, static uh, over all these years, uh, and it has morphed in many ways uh, to keep up with changes that were uh, happening in the sector. So Nancy, what are some of the biggest shifts uh, uh, that you've observed over, over these past uh, few decades? Well, it's gotten bigger and bigger, that's clear. The first one we had, we had in WRI's conference room, which probably held 100 or so people. But even at the beginning, we were outgrowing that conference room. And over the years, we had different co-hosts, always the World Bank and then IDB, um, the Asian Development Bank was a co-host. So uh, there were commonalities were the sharing, the, ho the, the host and co-host changed. And now it looks like it's um, uh, mainly a WRI World Bank. But I think the biggest, the biggest issue is size. I think you all have 800, 900 people and have had consistently, which is really amazing, become a major transportation event through the year. And I see you've moved it away from TRB. And I think that that's um, really strategic because now it's its own independent uh, conference on sort of an annual cycle of transportation events through the year. Um, what's in common is that, that the driving forces haven't changed. It still is population, um, uh, urbanization, motorization are still the big driving forces behind these problems that are in most places only growing. I mean, I think maybe some of the local air pollution problems, 
are uh, getting better. You know, I was really delighted to hear some of the solutions uh, that Buenos Aires was talking about and the effectiveness of them. But, you know, you could see the trends starting 20 years ago with the contribution of transportation to global air pollution to climate change. And that was one of the motivations behind Embark was that people weren't really paying attention to the contribution of transportation and the rate of increase. And now it's now it's more obvious. And that is one of the big changes that I see based on who's participating today in transforming transportation, the participation of the big global players and the national players and the recognition of transportation's contribution to global climate change. And I, I can't tell because I haven't participated in the sessions, uh, but the at least the words are there on the, uh, the need to think about transportation systems, resilience and adaptation, because they will be affected by the unavoidable climate change too. And most of that wasn't true 20 years ago. The recognition at the national and the international climate level of transport's contribution, size of it, nor how badly transportation systems were going to be affected by um, climate change. So, so Nancy, if I can add uh, one change from a World Bank perspective, uh, uh, it's the fact that TT started very much with an urban mobility focus. Uh, uh, but as we progressively understood that transforming transportation required a broader look, uh, since many of today's challenges in the sector are interlinked and uh, of a global nature, we see that TT has uh, now enlarged its scope. And as we saw today, I mean, we, uh, we are discussing now about logistics, about aviation, about maritime transport, about all the, uh, all the modes that are, are now reflecting on how they can be cleaner, safer, uh, more inclusive, and more resilient. No? So a final question, uh, Nancy, is, uh, TT has now grown into one of the key milestones on the international agenda. What do you think remains to be done and how TT can contribute even more to growing the momentum? There's so much that remains to be done because the, the challenge is huge. And I think that uh, I, I listened to the last panel about where we think we'll be in 20 years. And I was interested that most people on the panel gave a technological answer. Um, I think I'll hedge my bets and say TT maybe needs to go back to its roots a bit and include some skeptics. One of the fun things that we were doing 20 years ago, we were maybe a little more iconoclastic. We weren't diplomats, and so we didn't have to be as diplomatic. Uh, and uh, there's some room for skepticism. You know, 20 years ago, people were talking about the emerging clean diesel, and a lot of people in the room with us 20 years ago worked for companies who were caught, I, I can't say this any nicer because it's true, they were caught lying and cheating. There was a huge diesel, clean diesel scandal. Uh, company executives went to jail. Um, the previous panel talked about um, uh, school buses. Well, some of the first funding for electric school buses came from the penalties that the companies who were cheated on the clean diesel had to pay to the US EPA. So there's these funny connections there. But we, but Lee Shipper, for example, was very dubious about the possibility of there being clean diesel or even its contribution, even if it could hit the NOx targets, whether it would make the contribution to CO2 reductions given the shift in driving behavior of diesel. So have people on board on the panels who are skeptical and are willing to be skeptical out loud because uh, we don't really want everybody kind of running against, running after the soccer ball because some of those balls aren't really going to pan out. That's, that's I think, one of the things that I'd, I think would be valuable for TT over the next 20 years. And if I could add, one of the things I'd be most skeptical about is fully autonomous driving and its value in developing countries um, uh, in terms of compared to many, many other things that um, people have been talking about, which have, I think, more demonstrable value over the next 10 or 20 years. Um, but that's maybe that's just me. Um, but anyway, so I'd say, 
you know, be rigorous, be skeptical, and and keep it up. Bringing contestability. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Nancy, for your words of uh, of wisdom. Uh, TT success volumes about the loyalty of the TT community, about the quality of the program, but also about the quality of our, our collaboration with the World Resources Institute. None of this would have been possible without the drive and passion of teams on both sides. This is why I would like to convey my sincere appreciation to you, to our WRI colleagues, and to all our partners and our TT audience uh, for your unwa unwavering support. Uh, now, our discussion today and uh, tomorrow will make it clear that in the current development context, the case for sustainable transport is only getting stronger. The discussion happening right here at TT can be an excellent starting point for this. So together, let's keep transforming transportation. Thank you. Bye, Nihil. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you so much. Nancy, I think you just volunteered to be on next year's plenaries. Oh, I'd be nice, Femi. That'd be very nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care. Appreciate you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Nicola, I accidentally promoted him to Global Director of the entire World Bank. He is, of course, Global Director, Transport World Bank. Slightly different, but still awesome, Nicola. All right. You're like, when are the cocktails? Hold on. We're getting to them. But first, our lead sponsors for Transforming Transportation 2023, Visa and also FedEx. We're so happy to have you sponsoring this conference, this important conference, to make sure that we can do all of this and, and make some change in the world. So we appreciate you. I, I would like you to come up on stage, uh, both. So I'm going to ask Adama Iwu, She's the VP of Government Engagement at Visa Inc. And then Brand uh, Brandon Tidwell is the advisor of global citizenship at FedEx. Bearing in mind their jobs, these are going to be the best conversations you've heard all day, or they're in trouble. Actually, we're going to just try to make this the shortest conversations that you've heard all day. So, um, look, Visa's really excited to be here. We're thrilled to be here at this annual, or the 20th annual um, Transforming Transportation Conference. It's wonderful to be in a room with all of you stakeholders from all over the world with the shared goal of, you know, accelerating towards the green and inclusive mobility. And this is especially exciting because now more than ever, um, consumers' expectations and behaviors are really changing. And at the same time, our cities and governments, municipalities have to change as well. We're not going to be able to do it on our own. We're not going to be able to get there without working together. So we're especially excited to partner with the World Bank and the World Resources Institute and all of you because we strongly believe that modern systems, including open loop payments, not only make things easier for riders, but also improve local economies, help governments create efficiencies, and contribute to the sustainability goals that we've been talking about all day long. And lastly, Visa is here because we really believe that expanding digital payments also expands financial inclusion. We see it as a way to bring more people into the financial mainstream and give them access to some of the same financial tools that many of us already enjoy. So since I am between you and the reception, I'll close out. I want to wish you guys a lot of learning, a lot of excellent exchange of ideas. And if you have questions about Visa and our work in the transportation space, please Please come by our virtual booth or our physical booth out there. And we'll give it to Brandon. Thank you. Thank you so much for the chance to sponsor and participate in Transforming Transportation in your 20th year. Uh, thanks to the World Bank and WRI for their joint efforts to advance sustainable transportation and improve the quality of life for people all around the world. And also thanks to our co-sponsors, Visa and the FIA Foundation. Now, I just cut back to FedEx six months ago. And what's so funny is that Nancy Keat was the one who initiated our relationship back in 2009. And so uh, we attended our first TT back in 2010. So this is now, I haven't been here in 13 years. Um, so it's very exciting that we are still working with WRI and the Ross Center. In fact, we were working back in the day when it was Embark. Um, but then we, we both early on have recognized that the business of moving packages is very similar to the business of moving people. 
And so whether it's marketing a new service, investing in safety training, or improving the customer's experience, or navigating congested cities, our two organizations discovered we had a lot in common. Now, as we're working as a company for our carbon neutral goal by 2040, we firmly believe that relationships like this one here between the private and nonprofit sector, like FedEx and WRI, can help bring about a more sustainable future for everyone. In fact, WRI played a very critical role in FedEx's accomplishment of impacting 50 million lives by our 50th birthday, which will be this April. Uh, so as we enter our 14th year of support for the WRI Ross Center for Cities, the FedEx WRI Mobility and Accessibility Program is helping cities create jobs, uh, access to jobs, education, and commerce while finding transportation solutions that reduce car car congestion and carbon emissions for all. So together, our goal is to keep moving people and goods sustainably. Thank you.